Hello everyone. Welcome to the Oyster Mushroom Expert channel. On our channel, we often analyze problems that our viewers face based on their photos and other details they provide to us. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss new case studies. If you have a question, check out the video, How to Get Free Advice. It explains everything. And today, we'll take a look at this situation. A grower wrote to us about a problem. He doesn't understand what's happening to his mushrooms and asked for help. The temperature in his grow room is 13 degrees Celsius, approximately 55 Fahrenheit, and the humidity is 87 to 90 percent. I asked him if the temperature drops at night because that could explain these issues. Those of you who have watched the videos in the Oyster Mushroom Growing Problems playlist probably noticed these small white flakes on the caps right away. This is a sign that the outer skin layer was damaged due to a combination of low temperature and high humidity. The grower said the temperature sometimes drops to 11 or 12 degrees Celsius, about 53 Fahrenheit, but never lower. That's strange because the mushrooms in these photos clearly show signs of cold and high humidity. What are some other signs of these unfavorable conditions that we can see on these mushrooms? Look at these photos. Here, the mushrooms are growing in different directions. This is a typical reaction to poor conditions. And in this photo, there are some yellow mushrooms that have already died. Here we can see how the mushroom stems get thicker as they grow. That's how they try to increase their surface area to evaporate more moisture in a high humidity environment. You can also notice the wavy cap edges. That's always a sign of fluctuating humidity levels. Here you can see all the symptoms in one place. Because this cut in this bag is very long, all the pins didn't form at the same time. We see yellow mushrooms, mushrooms growing in different directions, and flakes on the caps. And most interestingly, these white growths. That's secondary mycelium forming on dead pins. I conclude that for this specific strain, these temperature and humidity levels are far from optimal. Most likely 12 degrees Celsius, which is 54 degrees Fahrenheit, is too cold for it, and 87 to 90 percent humidity is too high at that temperature. The grower doesn't know exactly what strain he has, but if we assume it's a tropical oyster strain, which thrives at 18 to 25 degrees Celsius, 64 to 67 Fahrenheit, then these conclusions make sense. It is always important to follow the correct parameters for the specific strain you are growing. One strain might be comfortable at 14 degrees Celsius, 57 Fahrenheit, while that temperature would be too cold for a different strain. Later, the grower sent me a video. Here we can see some beautiful mushrooms, but I noticed that all the bags have long cuts. I recommended to him to make three short cuts in a staggered pattern instead of one long one. Oyster mushrooms don't grow well when too much of the substrate is exposed. In the same growing room, there are also substrate blocks in trays. The mushrooms are growing on top and there's no plastic covering the substrate. They look good, but they're not growing in clusters and some have even stopped growing. This is what makes oyster mushrooms different from shiitake. With shiitake, growers remove the plastic after incubation and the mushrooms grow individually across the block. But oyster mushroom blocks will dry out without the plastic covering. And even if they grow, their yield will be decreased. Now here are two more photos. Try pausing the video and guessing why the mushrooms dried out. And here's the answer. Look, I got it right on the second try. At first, I guess it might be cold air, but the grower said that wasn't possible. Then I asked about hot air, maybe from an air conditioner, and it turned out there really was one in the room. This is exactly why I believe that a split system is not suitable for maintaining the temperature in the room. The airflow is too dry and can harm the mushrooms. I'm thinking of making a video about ducted air conditioners. If anyone is using them, share your experience in the comments. 
It would be great to learn from you. That is all for today. Much love, and we'll see you next time.